Previously, we answered the question, what is a quasar? And if you haven't watched that one yet, you might want to pause this video and click here. Or you could bravely plow on ahead because you already know, or because clicking is hard. So should you fall in the latter category, I am here to reward your laziness. A quasar is what you get when a supermassive black hole is actively feeding on material at the core of a galaxy. Now the region around the black hole gets really hot and blasts out radiation that we can see billions of light years away. Our Milky Way is a galaxy and it has a supermassive black hole at the core. Now could this black hole feed on material and become a quasar? Well, quasars are actually very rare events in the life of a galaxy and they seem to happen early on in a galaxy's evolution when it's young and filled with gas. Normally, material in the galactic disk orbits well away from the supermassive black hole and it's starved for material. The occasional gas cloud or stray star gets too close and it's torn apart and we see this as a brief flash as it's consumed. But you don't get a quasar when a black hole is snacking on stars. You need a tremendous amount of material to pile up so it chokes on all the gas, dust, planets and stars. Now an accretion disk grows, a swirling maelstrom of material bigger than our solar system that's as hot as a star. This disk creates the bright quasar and not the black hole itself. So now quasars might only happen once in the lifetime of a galaxy and if it does occur it only lasts for a few million years while the black hole works through all the backed up material like water swirling around a drain. Once the black hole has finished its stuff buffet the accretion disk disappears and the light from the quasar shuts off. Sounds scary. Now according to New York University research scientist Gabe perez Gies, even though a quasar might be emitting more than a hundred trillion times as much energy as the sun, we're far enough away from the core of the Milky Way that we'd receive very little of it, like one hundredth of a percent of the intensity we get from the sun. So since the Milky Way is already a middle-aged galaxy, its quasaring days are probably long over. However, there's an upcoming event that might cause it to flare up again. In about four billion years, Andromeda is going to cuddle up with the Milky Way, disrupting the cores of both galaxies. And during this colossal event, the supermassive black holes in our two galaxies will interact, messing with the orbits of the stars and planets and gas and dust. Some will be thrown out into space, while others will be torn apart and fed to the black holes. And if enough material piles up, maybe our Milky Way will become a quasar after all. Which, as I just mentioned, will be totally harmless to us. And the galactic collision, well, that's another story. It's likely our Milky Way already was a quasar billions of years ago, and it might become one again billions of years from now. And that's interesting enough that I think we should stick around and watch it happen. So how do you feel about the prospects for our Milky Way becoming a quasar? Are you a little nervous by an event that won't happen for another four billion years? Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. And we'd like to thank Damon Reith and Jay Albright and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. Let's take a step to your right. Too far back. And then jump to the left. Put your hands on your hips. Yeah. <clears throat> wow, you used to be way more fun. <laughs>